And hello, and welcome on back. Um, <clears throat> I also just realized that these might sound strange or look strange if they're out of order, and I apologize if they are out of order. That's why I'm leaving them time stamped. Um, four, five, five, 20. Roll it back some. There we go, perfect, 30 minutes. Sorry, <laughs> in a rush, because I don't know. I, I felt like I was really covering some good ground there. As far as just like the human psychology aspect of why people commit crimes. Like, <laughs> if people could figure that out in, like, in a nutshell, in the summary, I say in a nutshell a lot because, you know, remember I used to teach computer science to students from Saudi Arabia and from all over the world, really, um, and skiing to uh, workers from Argentina and snowboarding and all that. And, like, and not for money. Well, okay, sorry. The, the tutoring thing we did, like, I mean, they did pay, like, the tutors and stuff, but that came from the school. And even then, like, I wasn't doing it for the money. Like, if anything, I just used the money to buy us food and drink and, like, you know, and just to further enjoy our, our periods of our lives together. You know, sorry, that sounds a little hokey and a little, like, you know, like, serious, but we were also talking about, well, people dying in wars and stuff. And it's like, I don't know, just really gloomy stuff, but really to bring relevance and reference. I mean, if you understand the the weight of it, the gravity of these situations, then you understand the need for the problem solving. So, and I say this having lots of family and friends in law enforcement corrections, <laughs> on the receiving end of law enforcement and corrections, and you know, like, you know, just all over. And, and that's the thing, is like heavy is the head that wears the crown, kind of translates all the way down. I mean, you talk about not saying it's right, you know, not justifying any of the behavior, but you know, even the Nazis said we were following orders, you know, up until the point where, you know, it could have all just been the one guy, you know, just Hitler, just being like, you know, he had a really bad day, or he had something, or he got, you know, his head wasn't right, or there's an issue, or whatever the reason. And see, this, all of this is from an IT troubleshooting mindset, because it doesn't matter what happened, or who was involved. <laughs> that's my job to find out, like. Uh, forensics and anal forensic analysis is actually the the area that I'm studying right now and it's like Just yeah being able to re retrieve files Which and I don't even like where that path is going because I, I appreciate that Ashton Kutcher is out there um, trying to hunt sexual predators and or especially child predators and then uh, through the company called Thorn uh, and I don't even know if they're still doing it, but I know they were and even just that is enough and even just having his name on there That's what every celebrity should be doing not you know Hey, I'm gonna go help a bunch of hunt, hunt a bunch of pedophiles like no But I'm gonna go do something with my status with my money with my everything because honestly I'm in the opinion that nobody should have more than a million dollars That's it. Just nobody should have more than a million dollars. So why because if everybody had what they needed There's no point to money like there's no point to well, valuables because then it's not valuable then it's common and if you can raise the level of common and lower the level of luxury down to a median then everybody gets it and there you get world peace like because we are people we know what we like we know what we don't like and then we can just leave it at that and everything in between is just how we've adapted to our environments and we're coming together as a global environment Sorry, I thought I just saw, you know what? I'm going to build a big old mansion up on here. Because then as I'm like harvesting, then I could look over there. Because I thought there was like a village over there. Oh, wait, that is kind of getting into... Hmm. I did already say that someone could build over there. Huh. Maybe later. I'll ask them if that's okay. Anyways, so, um, back to my point though is death is permanent and whether you don't like or whether you can't handle how someone is acting or how someone is it's not your decision to end their journey like to end their experience it's it's not i don't care what it is you need to remove yourself from that situation and and i don't know and see that's the thing that's why i sympathize with law enforcement so much in granted I will say a lot of my friends and family got busted by law enforcement for doing whatever I mean a lot of it is unjust and unfair in my opinion like the DUIs in Fort Collins because We were the number one in the nation for DUIs for like two or three years in a row there And they laughed about it kind of they have a quota like you have to but then you got to remember Well, why do they have a quota? Well because they got to keep the lights on but also because there's a bunch of drunk driving deaths and I read about that and hear about that all the time, too so I mean I get it, but 
you need to do some more preventative stuff. And that's what we're working on too, is just like making better transportation. We've got Uber and this isn't just, you know, Northern Colorado, this is everywhere. I mean, again, we're all humans. This isn't an isolated incident. I'm sure, yeah, it's happening in other countries. And see, we don't think about that. We're like, wait, do they do this over there? Like, yeah, they do everything people do because they're people. Now, granted, there's a lot of things they do different because that's their culture. That's how they've adapted to accomplish the same goals as, you know, food, shelter, reproduction, and happiness. Like, that's, that's it. I mean, that's all it is. Like, and we're designed at the core. It's in our DNA. It's in our instinct, like, you know, to survive and procreate and thrive. Like, I don't know. And the, the other side of that, too, is given the current political nonsense, well, not nonsense, it is a serious matter, but only because it is a serious matter, which is unfortunate. If we untangle the, we the weave of cords that is world peace, we have to first untangle that the U.S. has a base in just about every country, every continent. I mean, like, well, not every country, but every continent for sure. And we're carving up Africa as far as resources, but then also helping build them. And that was um, one thing I did with the, I was commenting on with the, the Chinese government official. Um, they were talking about all of the improvements that they were doing for Africa. And that's great. I love it. And then, of course, a lot of people in the comments were like, wait a minute. You're putting them in debt, like you're, you're enslaving them and you're taking advantage of them. And now, and so that much, I don't know. And even then, like, say they are doing something like that, that, you know, yes, obviously it's unfavorable and like we, we shouldn't let it happen. But then how, see, it's a hard situation because how do you untangle, well, just like that part of human nature without first, so I don't know, I still think we're really close. And we're, we're close through technology and the open source community because already in order to get a job in tech, you have to like go do a bunch of free tools because yes, you can pay for it. But even with all that money that I paid for college, I still relied heavily on a lot of free tools. The university taught Linux. Linux is a free operating system. Well, wait a minute. If you're going to teach it, why don't you pay for a license for Windows or for Mac or well, and guess what? Mac is based off of Linux. Oh, and guess what else? Bill Gates was dumpster diving for part of his stuff for his wealth. Like, so what I'm saying is like, people will do people things. And whether they get caught or not, or whether they get punished or not, and then, but then look at what Bill Gates is doing now. Massive philanthropy. So much to the point that people are saying that he's like trying to kill people. Like, in what world does that make sense? Like, back, back in the Nazi days, Hitler went off as he did because he thought in his honest mind, that there was only one master race and he was trying to protect his species his race so imagine if like monkeys started using tools and like building computers tomorrow and sorry that sounded super racist like black people i'm not saying that but i'm just saying like the closer thing it's even right there it's it, ah, it's ridiculous because it's like it's like calling me a newt or a salamander or like you know or something or uh, monkeys are even bad because like they are smart but then they're not humans anyway sorry let's get off of that um where was I even going with that? Oh no, yeah, Hitler thinking that, and again, not justifying it because somebody should have corrected and been like, no, this isn't real. Those are people, and those are people, and people tried. I'm not, I'm not saying like, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm way over general, generalizing these things, but to keep it as concise as I can, because in order to understand that, you got to understand people and how they could become that evil. Because as it is, we've got a bunch of fairy tale storybooks that say like Hitler was literally the devil. And then I'm just kidding, not the books themselves, but that's what people believe. It's like, oh, he's the devil, Bobby Boucher. And I say that a lot because in Adam Sandler's Water Boy, his mom says everything's the devil. And that's that's the joke, is like she's a southern or Louisiana or I think it was Louisiana, where the people, again, same same thing, people, just different. Slightly different, not different enough to constitute an entire different species. And that's where racism is at, like, a, you know, at the root. You know, it's, uh, what was it, like, that song, there was a song, <laughs> we even said it at my, or, anyways. Uh, there's a song that says, uh, Jesus loves the little children, like, red, black, yellow, and white, or something like that. Because they were trying to, like, do their best with, like, making a song or something. And maybe you didn't realize that it sounded really messed up. Because hindsight bias, like if you're not exposed to it or people don't speak up, and, and of course a lot of that is like the people couldn't speak up. I mean, especially I'm thinking like um, in the segregation times in America. So for, there was a time here. So for my global viewers that don't know, uh, 
you couldn't drink at a water fountain if you had different skin color in this country. Like, the greatest country on earth. Like, pfft, whatever. I mean, no, I love my country, but it's the greatest earth on earth. I mean, why do we got to split hairs? That's my thing. It's like, oh, and that goes back to finite resources. And that even is an explanation to why. Let's go ahead and take a bunch of this out of here. I don't know. Um, finite resources. That triggers us at our core like wait in order to survive and to make sure that my family survives and all oh, now i have this family and this family and you know i'm specifically thinking about rich people like trump and all that is like and that inherit their wealth but it's because they've been given the flagship to guide the wealth of the family and that's why families used to be so important like the name but now i mean what's in a name like a lot of irish ancestors moved here and they didn't keep the real name like they did things like Ryan and Brown and Murphy. And like, I'm just kidding. Um, anyways, no, it's like, but uh, fake names. Same with um, immigrants too. They might go by a couple of names because they have one that their life depends on it. They have to go by it to fit the papers or you know forge documents or whatever, like the story. And even that, I feel like, is getting a lot of a uh, giving a lot of faith to people. Not in a bad way or a good way. I'm just saying it probably doesn't happen. Like it's probably more like they they're just you know white knuckling it every day that they don't get pulled over. I mean, ugh, what a scary thing to think about. Like I don't know. It's and because again it goes back to finite resources. So there's this illusion that well finite resources and then danger. So that's the other thing. You're making that boogeyman, that Satan, that devil out of immigrants. And just because of a few bad eggs, where have I heard that before? Cops. A few bad cops does not mean the entire thing. And there are tons of arguments going back and forth with that. And then, and then people are like, well, if they don't report it, then they're complicit. Bogus. I am sorry. That is absolute bogus. Like if it's a, you know, if it's your partner, that's why we have all these cop dramas. Like, oh, my partner, I found out he's dirty, and now i got to talk to him. And, and that's exactly it, because he's a human, and he needs to talk to his partner, figure out what's going on, and then, okay. But try to handle it on the lower level, because you're taking a sledgehammer to something that needs a tack hammer. Like, you just need a, the right tool for the job. Uh, and that's a lot of other things, too. Family court, I tell you. But, <laughs> no. Um, just law. Law enforcement. And unfortunately... And this is why police are all on edge anyways, because they have to have all this going on in their head. Like, they pull someone over. Could be someone that's high. Could be someone that's drunk. Could be someone that's angry and has a loaded gun. Like, anything. I mean, and, and then there's that other thing. Yes, at that moment, it's very important that the cop stays safe or accidentally kills somebody. Um, so it's a something we need to address. But it's understandable, all of it. And it's annoying that it even has to be a thing. And it could be cured or resolved if we just legalized weed. That's it. Seriously. It's just, <laughs> it's so stupid. And here's why. Because of bars. Because of alcohol. <clears throat> and alcohol is so entrenched in Christianity and uh, America. See, sorry, right there. I was talking with my hand, and I, let, I put the controller down, and then I forgot why. Um, no, so I'm like drinking in the microphone. Anyways, the blood of Christ is wine. Okay, that seems a little messed up. Is he like wasted all the time? What? And I've seen that on like cartoons and like, you know, the funny humorous things that I've been exposed to throughout my life is like, huh? I didn't think about it that way. But yeah, the blood of Christ, and in that statement. It made alcohol okay, because if alcohol is not okay, then Jesus isn't okay. And if Jesus isn't okay, then Muhammad's not a prophet. Aha, see, right there. I just related the relevance and the importance of it. Because in Islam, you're not supposed to show Muhammad's face. It's a slant. It's a travesty. I just saw a dildo with a Jesus face on it the other day. Like, how do you think Jesus feels about that? I mean, it's kind of hard to ask, because I don't believe that he's coming back. But if he does cool i'll talk to him i'll apologize i mean i've said some messed up things but not out of like anger towards him maybe just disappointment in how short his message fell and that's the thing is like kind of got ripped off i feel like i get ripped off every time i see someone that claims christianity then acts like a jerk then it's like really did you did you pay attention like are you really though and that's why a lot of people get frustrated and part of why i stopped going to church because like and I liked my church. A lot of the people at my church were good.
but I'm sure some of them acted like jerks and might have, and all they, they didn't even have to mention it. If it's just known that they go to church ever, then it's like, oh, he's the Jesus freak, like, you know, or whatever. Like, people will just make assumptions because it's the best that they can do. They're, they're decision makers. They have to decide, well, first off, is this person going to kill me? Or is this person going to steal from me? Is this person going to hurt my family? Or like, and that just goes through everybody's mind or doesn't, which is nice, but causes problems because think about like the suburbanite families or the gated communities and then they want to go help some poor children and basically treat them like animals like because you know, that's how they see them they're like well if they can't take care of themselves something must have been wrong well it could have been colonialism or something that could have started and then even after that just all of these things and christianity there you go spreading the idea that as long as you do da 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 then you will be okay and so then a lot of people and i know this is a thing in india um, a lot of people there believe like, oh, God will give me this and it's fine. And I think a lot of them are Christians, I want to say, but it doesn't matter. God or God's like, if I do these things, then I will get these rewards. You tell somebody that they're going to believe it, especially if you're a person of trust, like a preacher or a monk or well, no, what are other people, <sighs> leaders of other churches, other schools of thought, basically. So, oh, whoops, I also forgot. I started putting up this, uh, because <laughs> my voice carries, if you can't tell. So, I don't know. You know. I'm having a duplex. I got my neighbors, like, uh, it's okay, though, because, I mean, like, well, I used to have neighbors that would bang on the wall if I was being too loud, but that wasn't from my voice. Um, no, that's... <laughs> Oh, geez. But anyways, no, religion, alcohol, and weed. Like, that, it all comes down to that, at least for America. I can't speak for other things because I don't know. I know Saudi Arabia doesn't allow alcohol, and that's great, uh, but also bad. And here's why. Because they don't have control over the world, and so that automatically puts them in a position where maybe they want control in the world. And, you know, at first they weren't ready for alcohol or they saw what it did and they decided, nope, not for us. And that's fine. That's fair. Like, especially if they didn't realize, because think about what alcohol is. Like the person that found out about alcohol, well, I guess it probably has happened everywhere because a lot of it comes from just rotten fruit. Like it's, it ferments, it starts going bad. And then it's like, oh, well, if, you know, if I only have a finite amount of resources and I have to stretch my budget and uh, this fruit goes bad a lot, and I'm, you know, especially as someone who, like, <laughs> Well, any, everybody goes to the store, but if you don't and your parents still do for you, then just know, or if your roommates do or your significant other does, just know it's a pain in the butt. Like, you got to go, ugh, you got to fight with traffic, you got to go wander around a store, you got to go do things, you got to pay money, and then that means you know, put stress on you and more friction, like, oh, I got to go make more money. And, you know, and people living paycheck to paycheck, that is like life-threatening stress and anxiety-inducing events. Like, maybe not the first one or the third one, or the 50th one, but the 2000th, yeah. And you think about it, like I took on more debt to pay for this cybersecurity class, like, ugh, ridiculous. And see, and there's there's the trade-off too, is like, um, even in my little bubble, my little perception, my window, I saw friends get six-figure salaries right off the bat, or well, not quite, but close enough, but also have to sacrifice a lot of stuff in their life. So I'm still like where I want to be, kind of, I mean, I, I could go cheaper, but, um, <laughs> but like, but I don't have all the stress. I mean, I have stress. There's stress at work, but not a lot. I mean, especially not my first couple of jobs like that. And even that, they weren't as bad as I thought, but then at times they were worse than I thought. And people didn't understand why that was, or maybe they did. I don't know. Because it's all, it's all up to a bunch of factors. Like how wealthy is their family? Like how hard did they have to, you know, try in college? And granted in high school, I didn't have to try at all. It was free. It was right down the street from me. Like I had to show up. I mean, playing football was perfect because all I had to do was show up and hit people. Like, I mean, granted it was kind of, you know, took a toll on my head, but like <laughs> that was my job. Work out a lot and go run and go, you know, protect someone that's like playing with a ball back there. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know, they're going to go score a touchdown. I didn't care. I was a lineman. I just slammed into people and like made sure I could guide the flow, be a leader of force, really. And I did good. I was only like a buck 60 when I hit three, 300. So almost, if I had 320 on a bench max, I would have done two. Anyway, sorry. I like saying that because it's just like my little chance to brag. But 
and don't get me wrong, like a lot of this is, I like hearing myself talk, but it's because I like the idea. I don't care who says it, just what's being said, like fix the problems without screwing people over. See, that's the problem. When you're untangling a set of cords, you can't just yank a cord out. You're gonna, you could rip it, you could break the cord. And then you got to go buy a cord. Ooh, there's some friction for you. And the cords are expensive. I mean, they're getting better, but geez, like an HDMI or you know something for your monitor or anything like, yeah, to get a replacement cord. Now you usually get the cord with the device. So, but to get the device, that's super expensive. And so, and then wait a couple of years and then try to get a replacement cord for it. Like especially with our laptops. Thankfully, we were becoming more standard. I think it is the USB-C that we forced it to be a standard. But you had everything like you were calling it like the small barrel, big barrel, like you know the USB-B, 320 BBA. I'm just kidding. I'm just making stuff up now. But my point is, and even that money, finite resources, no, not even finite resources, greed, and either perceived or real greed, actually, Okay, wait, no, we were just talking about someone that, like, ripped off someone, I'm trying to remember, we were just talking about it. They stole, oh yeah, the, the Wild West guy, stole money from a bank and burned all the loan documents. Well, great, you just saved those people from having to pay a lot of money, but what about the bank? It's not that there's a, okay, and then you, th you have things like Mary Poppins, where it has the big bank executives, like, oh, oh, harumph, harumph, and they've got their big money, but then... They just don't stop. They keep going. And then they keep getting rewarded for keep going. And so then it's like, you know, oh, so we used to have these things, these like drag racer cars, not drag, like that drag, but you, you pull the car back and then it launches forward because it builds up momentum. Um, kinetic energy, stored energy in the form of whatever uh, substance or device or material was able to bend and then be tense. And then as soon as you let go, as soon as you weren't applying the necessary friction to hold it in place and yes that is still friction that's some basics phys basic physics that i i went in like the really basic physics like for non-science majors like anyways it's, it was still you learned some stuff but anyways without that friction the car launches forward it just goes and so that's just it like you go through you know, medical school law school um computer science school although luckily it is just a degree and now it's a boot camp and even more so you can just watch videos like this and get a job but then you have to be patient because you probably won't get like a high paying salary job right away. You'd probably at least be an intern for six months. And then if you can put up with all the intern work for that company, um, then you can get a job and then you can start making money. But you got to struggle. I mean, and don't mind you, if you do pay for any education, you're going to have that education debt. That's why people are trying to absolve of it. And then it's like, OK, but the people that didn't go to school, well, I don't want to pay for someone else's debt. This doesn't raise or lower your taxes. This just makes you bitter. I mean, and that's the point because, and then politicians are trying to, and sorry, I'm trying not to like get like angry about it or anything because it is, and I've seen like, I've just seen a lot more truth on the Democrat side. I'm sorry. Like, and then it's like, oh, there's going to be other Republicans out there like, oh, you're so this and that. No, because think about it. Like a lot of it, there's just a common thread of, trying to look out for the big guy and trying to trickle down on the on the common person and so right there trickle down talking about the mass wealth and the first person makes sure they're good but then they keep getting bigger because they don't know when to stop so their cup becomes a jug and then and see that's the thing is like before any money is wasted which money is never going to be wasted it's a resource like why would you just waste money so before it touches the floor the liquid will fill every cup but the liquid will never fill the bottom cups because the first cup keeps getting bigger and bigger. And ho, oh, now other people are coming by. They may be provided the glasses, but now they want interest. Now they want some money for their time because it's their money. Why shouldn't they? Like, and, and that's the thing. That's how you start fixing these things, really, is you destroy money markets. Not overnight because that would screw people over and that would be bad. And people don't want that to happen. But, so you have to put in... Okay, think about the Indiana Jones thing with like the gold statue and he's like got the sack of sand in his hand. You can't take the gold statue away without putting the sand there to replace it. Like, and that's even, okay, so the Indiana Jones thing, okay, he defiled the temple, but those people, and maybe that is the thing, if the gods come back and they get mad, but I highly doubt it because which god? I mean, there's been so many gods throughout history and even that logic right there, people might not know if they don't go to college. Like, did you know 
that even Christianity is like 1,000 different religions? Huh. <laughs> Which is actually kind of scary in the other way because like there totally could be a God and then like this is just all of our different interpretations of what it is. And mind you, I'm not even like that religious. I'm spiritual and that I believe that nature is just a bunch of random happenstance, but it is life and it needs to be respected. So, But then I can't draw the line at just like all life. I can't be all inclusive because I do like eating meat. I know there's meat alternatives coming out, and I know that's a uh, that's the thing with Bill Gates um, that uh, he's making that pretend meat, and that's a big thing for India. I mean, cows are sacred, but then again, resources. Now, why are the cows sacred? Because they provide everything, right? They provide food, shelter. I mean, well, actually, I don't think they eat them. They're like even more sacred than that. Like they provide the milk because they they got to be drinking the milk. I mean. Unless that's not even a thing, because then you get into vegan, and that's why I can never be vegan. It's because I love milk. I mean, and my uncle had a dairy farm and actually bought cows from the Dominican Republic, which right there, you've got this these animals grazing in tropical areas that are, like, in our eyes, destroying, like, beautiful tropic, like, paradise, and the pe the eyes of the people doing the, or having the animals, they're just like, I just need to get my money, like... You know, I need to feed my family. I need to take care of myself, my you know, my people. And so, yeah, it's just, and even that sort of stuff. You don't hear that kind of thing unless you're like around like jails or people that've been in jail or prison or like or, or law enforcement or corrections. Is like this is how people talk. I mean, are you gonna go take care of your people, your folks, and then you listen to gangster rap or maybe go to jail yourself or you know whatever. I'm just like, I don't know. And more and more people are doing this, and it's because it's like. It's like the curtain is pulled back and it exposes a layer of truth that people didn't realize. And they're like, hey, we got to tell everybody about this. That's awesome. You know, go shout it from a mountain, but don't do it all. Like, <laughs> okay, like, I mean, present it, but then, and that's what news used to be. But people didn't really care about the news unless it was like really important. And so then it's like, okay, there you go. I got a resource. It should have been a push versus pull economy. News should be. And that's what Twitter is. It's like, when I'm ready to look at something, I'm going to look at something, and then I'm going to choose what I look at. And that's a great way to describe it, because if I don't like a topic, I just keep scrolling. And it used to be you'd have to sit there and watch a 30-minute segment, and they know it too. It's not like the, you know, the news people don't have any idea what's going on or why people are watching only when they do or not. But, I mean, we understand that now with YouTube. Like, we study it. I can tell you, I'm not even a real YouTuber yet. Like, I, or what is a real YouTuber? I'm up almost to 170. I don't know. There's tactics. I could say like, like and subscribe every video, and I, I might one day. I might, I might get cheesy, but I don't know. Anyways, people pay attention to it. They look, they see. That's social media in a nutshell. And then there's the danger of it, the downside. So social media, like, there's the argument that it's it's unhealthy for. Young girls especially because there's such a high standard. And, th and this is true. I'm not saying that this is wrong. But we can fix this in a few ways. So positive self-image, uh, emphasizing that everything is temporary except for death. And except for disabilities. Now that's the other thing too. And that's why... <clears throat> sorry. <coughs> More focus needs to be on ability tech. Like... And for veterans, for non-veterans, for everybody. But again, finite resources and money. Like, who's going to pay for it? Okay, so... Military. If we convince China to legalize weed, and that forces America to legalize weed, then there's no more war. There's no more military. Russia? Pff, who cares about Russia? I mean, yeah, Russia is dangerous versus this, but like, you're already tied up with the Ukraine thing, and Ukraine's like fighting back. Like, you got the rest of the world looking at you right now. But China, and I don't want there to be a thing. I, that is the last thing any of us want. And here's the thing. We can't let anyone lose out. So, sorry, not who cares about Russia. Who cares about Putin specifically? And he has to be that. I mean, unfortunately, like, that's, oh, wait, wait, wait. We we're about to start harvesting without. Because even, no. I don't think he deserves to die by any means. I don't think anyone deserves to die. Like, if they just, like, stop, stop. Now, for a while, people are going to think that. And then, <sighs> See, that's the other thing, too. I want it to have never happened in the first place. First thing we do is stop everything. We figure it out. Because then it's like, how do we make these places to where they can have their cake and eat it, too? Like, 
have their independence, but yet pay what's owed. Like, like here's the other thing too. So, okay, let's go back to, let's talk about the U S and colonialism. So we came over here. Oh, nope. That's, that's 30 minutes. Let's do that in the next one. All right. I'll see you. In, oh, and there's the alarm. All right. I'll see you in part three, colonialism in America. Ta-ta.